My name is Zach Arnold. I'm a Hollywood film and television editor, a documentary director, father of two, an American ninja warrior in training, and the creator of Optimize Yourself. For over 10 years now, I have obsessively searched for every possible way to optimize my own creative and athletic performance, and now I'm here to shorten your learning curve. Whether you're a creative professional who edits, writes, or directs, you're an entrepreneur, or even if you're a weekend warrior, I strongly believe that you can be successful without sacrificing your health or your sanity in the process. You ready? Let's design the optimized version of you. Hello and welcome to the Optimize Yourself podcast. If you're a brand new optimizer, I welcome you and I sincerely hope that you enjoy today's conversation. If you are inspired to take action after listening today, why not tell a friend about this show and help spread the love? And if you're a longtime listener and optimizer OG, welcome back. Whether you're brand new or you're a seasoned vet, if you have just 10 seconds today, it would mean the world to me if you clicked the subscribe button in your podcast app of choice because the more people that subscribe, the more that iTunes and the other platforms can recognize this show, and thus the more people that you and I can inspire to step outside their comfort zones to reach their greatest potential. And now on to today's show, which to be honest is going to be a bit of an experiment. As a long time listener, you already know how much I love to do in-depth interviews on a variety of topics, whether that's allowing everyday people to share their personal and their inspirational journeys, or industry experts and world-renowned authors who share their expertise to help you optimize a specific area of your life. But today, what I want to do instead is give you an insider's glimpse into the world of my optimizer coaching and mentorship program and what we call the hot seat. What you're going to hear today is a recording of an actual live session with an Optimizer student where on the hot seat, we tackle various questions, whether that's about career transitions, productivity, workflows, networking, burnout, habit formation, resumes and websites, and any other number of work-life challenges that students bring to the table as they navigate their own paths toward success. In the following Hot Seat session, community member Matthew Frugia finds himself struggling with anxiety about his career. He is constantly worrying that he's not doing enough to further himself, and he finds himself catastrophizing when he doesn't get immediate responses from the people that he reaches out to. Whether you are at the start of your career or you are firmly established already, there is no doubt this is a topic we can all empathize with deeply. Listen in to hear how we help Matthew find some relief to this very relatable problem. And very quick audio disclaimer. In this recording, you're going to hear that the quality of my audio, it's not up to my usual standards because I was using a different microphone and the setting was wrong, blah, 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 yada, 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 short version of the story. The value in this content is worth sharing, so please excuse the lower quality on my part when it comes to this conversation. If you find these sessions valuable, we're going to be sharing Hot Seat Fridays with you every week that are going to be jam-packed with practical, real-world strategies that you can easily apply to your own lifestyle and career to send you off with an action plan for the next Monday ahead. And if after listening to this, you're wishing that you could schedule your own hot seat session, I invite you to join our community of optimizers, where you are going to find all the support and connections you need to optimize every aspect of your life. Just go to optimizeyourself.me slash optimizer to learn more about the various coaching and mentorship options available so you and I can start working together today. All right, without further ado, here is today's Hot Seat Friday session with Matthew Ferugia, made possible today by our amazing sponsors Evercast and ErgoDriven, who are going to be featured just a bit later in today's episode. And as a quick reminder, to subscribe so you don't miss future interviews just like this one, please visit optimizeyourself.me slash podcast. So what is your hot seat topic for today? Um, so you may remember I brought this up when you and I first started talking before I joined um, Optimize Yourself is I get really bad, like, career anxiety. Like, it will be just in the middle of the day or, like, I'm driving and it's like, what am I doing to advance my career? Like, right now. And it's like, I'm driving. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm getting home. How's that for an answer? But it's like, there's like this whole half of my brain that I just can never seem to switch off. And I think that this would be a great last hot seat for this semester is exercises, techniques, things that you can do to 
I guess like control this. Like, like I don't know. I'm like, like, it's hard for me to even talk about because like I, I don't exactly know. Career anxiety is like just the only thing I can call it. It's like if I have a day where I'm not trying to like email someone or talk to someone or find a way to do what I want to do. It's like I, I, I go to bed that night with like a guilt trip. So for you, it's about how can I better manage some of the anxieties that I'm getting about my lack of progress forwards in my career? Basically, and it's like, and it's, it's, it's like, even that, it's like, I have a good start for my career, but it's like, I don't know, I, I, I want to be working on the biggest thing tomorrow <laughs> sort of thing. And it's like, that's not how this works. I know that's not how this works, but it's like, I have this whole other side of my brain. Like, I'm sure this is something like you've dealt with in the past. I just, I need help trying to figure this out and to like control it. Yeah, well, the, the short answer to that is this was the first eight years of my career. The other thing I want to bring up is, in general, when it comes to this entire program, I see us as providing two very important services at, its, at our core. One, we help people do better. And two, we help people be better. And I think this is more under being rather than doing. So I'm going to turn this into a double hot seat. And I'm going to pull Debbie into this conversation. Because Debbie's our resident expert on being and slowing down. And I'm going to give you all kinds of productivity strategies and this and that. She is my resident expert at helping me be as opposed to do. Because I always want to do more and focus on where am I supposed to be? And why do I feel this anxiety about what isn't done? And she always talks me off the ledge. So Debbie, I'm putting you on the hot seat. What, what are your thoughts? Well, my first thought is a question, Matt, which first of all, you're very... What you're talking about is very common. We, I think we all have this. We all do this to ourselves. But my question would be, what are you making it mean? What are you making? Why is this pressure so big? What are you making it mean to yourself that you're not at the place you want to be in your career? Why, why is this pressure so big? Because you, kind of, you kind of said that you, you're doing okay and you've, you know, you've, you're making some progress. But you're still like, but you want something else to happen tomorrow. Well, why is that so important? What is it? I think it's because it's like I I have this goal of working on features and like I like, you know like big shows, and it's like I I think one of my biggest fears is never getting there. You know, I don't want to be pigeonholed into you know like unscripted or some other form or even like, you know, uh, before I was an assistant editor, I was always worried about, you know, not even being able to get in, you know, for me, all of this comes down to like, just kind of, it's, it's, it's like a fear of failure, I guess, like never achieving my full potential, never getting where I want to be. I don't know if that answers your question or like. And what would that mean if you never got to where you wanted to be? What would happen then? I just like would never feel accomplished, you know. Like I would never, like, like let's just say, like hypothetically, I, I go through all, all my whole career. And I'm I'm working the same home renovation show that I'm working in right now. You know, and I rise up through the ranks there, and I, it, it, it's, it's one of those things. Like I like I would look at like my career, like hypothetically, and like I'm like 23, so it's like I would look at my career 20, 30 years later and look at it, and I'd be like. I don't really care about this kind of TV show, you know? Like, this isn't what I'm interested in working. Like, this isn't what, what I'm interested in wa like watching. We all want, you know, we all want to work on what we want to watch, I think, is, like, that's one of the biggest things that I've always thought of about the film industry, at least. And for me, it's just, like, this big... Like, one of the reasons why I, I got into the film industry is because I've always wanted to, like, be a part of making big worlds and big stories and, like having those shows that people watch and it's like the Mandalorian and, and Avengers because it's like these people are so absorbed into it and there's forums and, you know, you like people like love your show. I'm not even saying like, you know, put me as, the, you, know, you know, like the hot seat of Comic-Con. Like I'm not even, I, 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 that's not even like my big thing, but it's like, I just want to be part of like making big worlds and working on shows like a home renovation show is just not that. So it's like, if I went through my whole career and I never got there and, you know, like the one thing I, I always hear is how hard it is to get there, how hard it is to get on these, you know, uh, union 
feature films and it's like wow like that's you know it's, it, it, it's so hard what if i never get there and it's like okay well what, what can i do to get myself there and it's like oh well i can talk to this person i can research this i can find out who this was find them on facebook send them a facebook message like okay so here's a really good example I watched a filmmaker, you like 30 minute interview. I found the guy on on Facebook after his interview. I sent him a message just yesterday. He responded to me. It's like a week later in between me sending him the the message and like him responding. I sent him another one. I've been, this guy lives in London. I'm checking my Facebook messenger like hourly to see if he's responded again. (laughs) Yeah, and it's like, and he's seen it. I can see that he's seen it, which is the worst. It's he's seen it. He hasn't responded. And in my head, I'm trying to rationalize it. Oh, okay, it's London. He's asleep. But now it's like, I, I you know, while uh, the last person was talking, I go back on Facebook. He still hasn't responded. And it's like, like things like that happen to me. Or it's like, you know, Zach and I have worked on I, I, I outreach emails. And like when people don't respond, that drives me it's not like it's not that like like oh how dare you not respond to me what's wrong with you this like anxiety of like oh my god this was a possible like game changing connection every connection is a game changing connection in my head every connection it's like this is a game changing connection and I blew it it's gone it's over this could have been it this could have been how I got into Avengers twenty thirty movie you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like who knows the endless possibilities that this could have been. And things like that is what just like rips my head apart. That's what it's like. And it's, I don't know. It's. I think what's happening is you're, you're allowing the, the mind to project too much and to keep going and to buy into the stories. And the stories are basically, you're just sort of imagination right? It's not actually reality. And you know that that one connection and that one reply is not going to change your life tomorrow, right? You know, just reaching out to this one person is not going to get you your dream job tomorrow. It's all a very slow process. And you're taking the right steps, but you're allowing your mind to sort of get away from you, right? And you're buying into it and you're following all the stories. And so one of the, one of the ways that, that I use to sort of counteract that is, is through just focusing on your breath and just bringing yourself back to the present moment and focusing on like your body and just the, the reality of what is happening right now. And slowly through that process, you can let go of those stories. And it's not that those stories aren't true. Sometimes they might be true. But a lot of times they're not true. A lot of times we're going into these stories that we've just projected all these, all these things. I mean, would you be any less of a person if you did work on home improvement shows for your whole career? I mean, what if you ended up finding fulfillment in that and, you know, you had a really balanced life and you were able to pursue all these other things and you had a family and, and you worked in home improvement shows? Well, does that make you less of a person? I mean, the right answer is no, it doesn't make me less of a person, but it's one of those things to where it's like, and you know, this comes with the doubt and the insecurity that everybody has. If that was my life, it's like, you know, for a career, I've wanted to be in the film business since I was four. There's home videos of me saying, I'm going to make movies since I was four years old, you know, and I had military as my backup career in case this never worked out. But now since becoming diabetic, well, the military is gone. So now it's like, I have to put all like my everything, like all my chips into this film basket. I know I do give myself a lot of like artificial pressure, you know, I, and it's Mm -hmm. like, there's one half of my brain that's like, what are you doing to yourself? Like why? And it's like literally the other half is like, Okay, no, but that voice is right, dude. Like, the other voice is like, bro, wh- why haven't you sent someone a message all day? What's wrong with you? Do you just not care anymore? And it's like, no, it's not that I don't care, but like, I've literally emailed everyone I could. 
My sincerest apologies for the interruption in the middle of this interview. But if you are a content creator or you work in the entertainment industry, not only is the following promo not an interruption, but listening has the potential to change your life because collaborating with Evercast is that powerful. Here's a brief excerpt from a recent interview that I did with Evercast co-founders, Brad Thomas and award-winning editor, Roger Barton. Living this lifestyle of a feature film editor has really had an impact on me. So I was really looking for something to push back against all of these lifestyle infringements that are imposed on us, both by schedules and expectations. When you guys demoed Evercast for me that first time, my jaw hit the floor. I'm like, oh my God, This is what I have been waiting for for a decade. I also had the same reaction when I first saw Evercast. Two words came to mind, game changer. Our goal, honestly, is to become the Zoom for creatives, whatever it is you're streaming, whether it's editorial, visual effects, pro tools for music composition, live shot cameras. It's consistent audio and video, lip sync always stays in sync. Whether you're in a live session where you're getting that feedback immediately or you can't get it immediately, so you record the session and you can share those clips with people on the production team where there's no room for any confusion. It's like, this is exactly what the director wants. This is exactly what the producer wants. What matters most to me is it makes the entire process more efficient, which then translates to us as creatives who spend way too much time in front of computers. We get to shut it down and we get to go spend time with our friends and family. The biggest complaint, and I'm sure you guys have heard this many, many times, this looks amazing, I just can't afford it. Tesla had to release the Model S before they released the Model 3. So by the end of the year, we are going to be releasing a sub $200 version a month of Evercast for the freelancer and indie creatives. Anyone who is a professional video creator outside of Hollywood. I think what we've learned over the last few months is that this technology can translate to better lives for all of us that give us more flexibility and control while still maintaining the creativity, the creative momentum, and the quality of work. I cannot stress this enough. Evercast is changing the way that we collaborate. If you value your craft, your well-being, and spending quality time with the ones you love, Evercast now makes that possible for you and me. To listen to the full interview and learn about the amazing potential that Evercast has to change the way that you work and live, visit optimizeyourself.me slash Evercast. Now back to today's interview. One of the questions you can ask yourself when you're when you have those two those two brains going on, the two wolves, the bad wolf and the good wolf, just ask yourself, is this useful, right? Is this useful that I'm putting all this pressure on myself? And that, you know, you said, you just said it yourself, you have to put all your chips in one basket. Well, do you? I mean, maybe you want to, and maybe that's okay. But adding that pressure onto yourself is not actually helpful. Right. And I think you can see that. And the way you can see that is, is what it's doing to your mind and the the anxiety that it's producing inside of you. And once you sort of recognize when the anxiety comes up and the way that I would recommend you kind of do that instead of buying into those stories is you feel what it's doing to your body. Right. You'll feel if your heart's racing or your chest is clenching or, you know, your stomach's turning Whatever those symptoms are, when you when when those stories come up, feel what's happening in your body and just feel it as a direct experience and don't go into the stories. And then once those stories keep taking over, ask yourself, is this useful, right? Because it's not just adding that pressure onto yourself is not, it's actually probably paralyzing you, right? Or it's just making you more crazy with that like, oh, I have to do more, I have to do more. And, and that's just, I mean, that's just setting you back even further. And so it just comes to coming back to the breath and focusing on that present moment and not allowing those stories to run away with you. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, and yeah, it, like it makes, it's, it makes me like desperate. And that's when I send the emails and Zach's like, oh, hey, buddy, what are you doing there? Like, hold on, we need to, we need to cool it right there. Like that mm-hmm. sends the bad emails. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing, I've gotten good at controlling the bad emails. And like Zach, you know, since be, well, being a part of this class, one thing I've been doing for every email is I read it out loud. Because first off, I, I catch a lot of spelling mistakes, uh, grammar mistakes. But... <laughs> It does help. And then it's like, after I I get done reading, it's like, I don't want to send it. And it's like, I just walk away from it. I have like 
three emails in my drafts right now that I just like, like I'll work on a little bit, read the whole thing out. And it's like, okay, well, I read it. So I guess I feel a little bit better. I'm just going to leave it in here for right now. So I'm going to step in for a second, if you don't mind, Debbie. First of all, everything Debbie said is not even remotely what I would have said and is way better because I'm always Mr. To-do list, what comes next? And she's absolutely right. You need to focus on what this is doing to you and whether or not it's useful. And another question that I ask myself, because I get caught in this spiral all the time, is feeling this way and thinking this way really serving me, which is a very, very similar way of saying what she's saying. But does it serve me? Sometimes it does. I'll give you a very specific example. When I go to my ninja training on Sundays and I feel this intense nervousness and anxiety because I need to climb up a pegboard, then go across a beam that's 20 feet over the ground with no real mat. And if I fall, I'm going to break a leg and then go down a rope and then go back up or up and down the beam. Is that fear serving me? Hell yes, that fear is serving me because it's going to put me in survival mode and I'm not going to fall. But is sitting in bed at three in the morning thinking about all the jobs that I'm not doing right now that I should be doing because I think I'm supposed to be at this point in my career doesn't serve me. But what I want to do to give you as a, the, an additional action step, because I agree that the first part of this is being aware of what these thoughts are doing to you physically and emotionally. So if you don't have any form whatsoever of a meditation practice, that's something I would look into. And I'm not saying go be a Buddhist monk, but maybe find a way to take five, 10 minutes a day just to understand how quickly are my thoughts really racing? And can I stop myself and just learn how to breathe? Because that seems crazy. Everybody knows how to breathe. Nobody knows how to breathe. You need to learn how to breathe like a skill. But the other question I want you to ask yourself, are you focusing on things that you can control or things that you can't? And I'm going to use the outreach message as the perfect example. Can you control whether or not this person in London is going to respond to you? No. Can you control the quality of your outreach message such that if they don't respond, you can say, I couldn't have done any better. The situation is what it is, and I'm going to move on to the next one. But I feel confident I have taken the right next step. Is that something you can control? Yes. If they don't respond... And you're thinking to yourself, oh, my God, I'm just I'm such a moron. And I just I did such a crappy message. And why did I fall? Why did I say all these things? That's going to create anxiety as opposed to I sent a really good message. I felt like I provided this person value. If they didn't respond, either they're too busy or we're not the right fit. I'm OK with that. I'm going to move on to the next person. And I also feel confident that at some point I can follow up and maybe still connect. But if you focus on what you can control, do you feel that will reduce some of your anxiety? Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things is being able to try and like reduce the anxiety and focusing on what I can control. And it's like like seeing it and it's like, okay, I can't control it if he responds to me or not. And being able to like not get hung up on it. That's one of my biggest issues is that like, it's like I want to like go through the screen and be like, hey, buddy, me. Uh, uh, it's been, you know, it's and right there, by the way, right there. That's the mindset shift you need to make. It's not, Hey, Hey, I'm over here. I'm awesome. Instead, it needs to be, Hey, I want to help you. I want to make your life better. And I want to provide you value. That's the mindset shift you need to make to reduce your anxiety. Cause when you think it's all about, I need your attention and I'm over here. That's why nobody's responding to you. It's gotta be about them. You make it about them and making their lives better. You're going to get more responses. You are going to go to bed at night feeling better about the value that you provided to another person. And in return, you're going to get everything you wanted anyway and more. But you got to shift that mindset because it can't be about, hey, guys, I'm over here. Why aren't you looking at me? Why aren't you paying attention? That's the mindset shift that's going to help you focus on what you can control. And the side effect of that is you're going to be less anxious because you know I'm taking the next best steps and I'm doing what I need to do. And I would also add in uh, something that that Jonathan put in the chat um, about defining your one thing. Um, and that's one of the great modules in the course is finding your one thing and maybe revisit that podcast that, that Zach did with Jay Papazan about finding your one thing and that it's a slow process and that if, as long as you're doing that one thing, knocking down that small domino, you know, eventually things will, things will fall into place. And I know when I, when I went through that, my one thing was meditation. And I know that if I meditate in the morning, the first thing, the rest of my day goes so much smoother. And 
what happens for me anyway, you know, cause I, I do the same thing with anxiety and, and kind of making things, you build things up in your mind that mean so much things like Zach said that are out of our control. Um, you know, you can't control if someone responds to you or not, you can only control your actions. So maybe, you know, revisiting that and, and figuring out what your one thing is. And maybe your one thing is to, is to practice a couple of minutes of breathing and meditation in the morning or something to just to kind of bring your focus back to your body and realize what's happening. It's not all up here. It's not all about the stories in, in, in our head. There's a, there's a lot going on in the body that we can pay attention to and that will help ground us more. That is terrific advice. I love this hot seat topic, by the way. This isn't something that we talk about too often. We do lots of resumes and emails and websites, but it takes a lot of courage for you to jump in front of a group and talk about this. Uh, I really applaud you for that. Yeah. Um, and I hope that we've given you at least a couple of actionable steps. Um, and I'd love to, to continue talking about this as well. And I think that uh, if there's the potential for you to look at the, the networking program, I think that learning the skills and taking control of your ability to communicate with others to get you closer to the things you want to do is going to alleviate a lot of your anxiety. And that's not a sales pitch, but I do think that that's going to help you alleviate your anxiety. If it's a good fit, great. If it's not, no pressure whatsoever. No, and I do think so too. And that's why like the advanced networking course is something that like I am very interested in and yeah, and I can talk to you more about that in like email or Slack. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll converse about that. But in the meantime, learn to breathe, my friend. Learn to take a breath. That's going to be your next step. Learn to breathe. <laughs> um, but I, I really, I really appreciate you coming and talking about this and being so honest because my guess is just about everybody else has felt this at some point if they're not feeling it now. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Before closing up today's show, I would love to ask for just a couple additional minutes of your time and attention to introduce you to one of my new favorite products created by my good friend Kit Perkins, who you may recognize as creator of the Topo Mat. Here is a brief excerpt from a recent interview that I did with Ergo Driven co-founder and CEO Kit Perkins talking about his latest product, New Standard Whole Protein. I'm into health and fitness generally, but I want it to be simple and straightforward. About a year, year and a half ago, I started adding collagen into my protein shakes. And man, the benefits were like more dramatic than any supplement I've ever seen. So I thought if I could just get this down to coming out of one jar and it's ingredients that I know I can trust and you just put it in water and you don't have to think about it. When people think of protein powders, they think, well, I don't want to get big and bulky. And that's not what this is about. To me, this is about repair. So a big part of what we're talking about here is you are what you eat. Your body's constantly repairing and rebuilding and the only stuff it can use to repair and rebuild is what you've been eating unfortunately as the years have gone by every day getting out of bed it's like you know two or three creaks and pops in the first couple steps and that i thought you just sort of live with now but yeah once starting the collagen daily or near daily it's just gone so for us job 1a here was make sure it's high quality and that's grass-fed 100 percent pasture raised cows and then the second thing if you're actually going to do it every day it needs to be simple it needs to taste good well my goal is that for anybody that is a creative professional like myself that's stuck in front of a computer, number one, they're doing it standing on a topo mat. And number two, they've got a glass of new standard protein next to them so they can just fuel their body, fuel their brain. So uh, you and I, my friend, one edit station at a time are going to change the world. And even better for your listeners with code OPTIMIZE, on either a one-time purchase or that first subscribe and save order, 50% off. So if you do that subscribe and save, that's 20% off and 50% off with code OPTIMIZE. That's a fantastic deal. If you're looking for a simple and affordable way to stay energetic, focused, and alleviate the chronic aches and pains that come from living at your computer, I recommend New Standard Whole Protein because it's sourced from high quality ingredients that I trust and it tastes great. To place your first order, visit optimizeyourself.me slash new standard and use the code optimize for 50% off your first order. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Hot Seat Fridays. If you find this new format valuable, please reach out and let us know. Just go to optimizeyourself.me slash contact to leave your honest feedback. And if after listening, you are wishing that you could schedule your own hot seat session, I invite you to join our community of optimizers, where you are going to find all of the support and connections you need to optimize every aspect of your life. Just go to optimizeyourself.me slash optimizer to learn more about the various coaching and mentorship options available so you and I can start working together. 
And as a quick reminder, to subscribe so you don't miss future interviews just like this one, please visit optimizeyourself.me slash podcast. And a special thanks to our sponsors Evercast and ErgoDriven for making today's interview possible. To learn more about how to collaborate remotely without missing a frame and to get your real-time demo of Evercast in action, visit optimizeyourself.me slash Evercast. And to learn more about ErgoDriven and their brand new product that I am super excited about, New Standard Whole Protein, visit optimizeyourself.me slash New Standard. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, healthy, and sane, and be well.